Hi. Today I have a treat for you. Um, when we talk about conversions, vehicle conversions, we are used to seeing minivans, vans, and all sorts of different vehicles. But I am sure this one is going to blow your mind away. This one is really unusual. And I am sure it is probably the only vehicle like this on the roads. Let's see what it is. So, let me introduce you to Deb. She is the owner of this little creature and she is going to tell us what it is and how she got to get that. Hi Deb. Hi, I'm <laughs> we have been we have been friends for a long while, so <laughs> we can be natural and we can go for this. <laughs> so <laughs> what are you driving? I am driving a Prius Limo camper mobile. <laughs> that is a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> and there may be, I don't know, maybe 15 of them on the planet, wow. but I've only ever seen one mine on the road. So if you go to YouTube and put in Prius Limo, you'll see a few videos of things that were manufactured and indeed sold to people, but it's been a long time. And probably yours is, I can imagine, the only one that is a camper. Yes. <laughs> Although when I've been driving around and stop at places to get gas, a few people are like, oh my gosh, I would totally use that as a camper. And I'm like, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Beautiful. How how did you always liked the idea of a Prius? Yes. That and you was my were plan. going to live in, in a car mm -hmm. in a Prius. Yep. And there are many Priuses yeah, cars oh God, yeah. that people are using for camp I mean for camping. Mm -hmm. Um are you going to be a a full time band dweller? Yes. At some point? Yes, in the not so distant future. Nice. Yes. So but how how come you ended up with this one in particular. <laughs> well, like you said, I had the idea of a Prius because I'm all about reliability and gas mileage. That's what's important to me. So on that spectrum between freedom and comfort, I'm more towards the freedom side. And um, several years ago, I remember watching a, a Bob Wells video mm -hmm. of several Prius owners, I think, at the RTR. And one of them mentioned that he bought a uh, remodeled Prius from a gentleman who does that for a living in Indiana and I just kind of tucked that away in my head and then during the lockdowns I'm like okay I have to I have to make this dream come true I don't know how but I'm just gonna keep going like this is actually gonna happen and reached out to him and said hey how does this work what, what, what do you do and he's like, well, just let me know the make and model and features that you're interested in. And then, oh, by the way, look at this. And from the moment I saw the photo, I knew that's what I had to have. Because, oh, my God, four extra feet in a Prius. Four extra feet yes. inside. Inside. Nice. Inside. So the story is about 10 years ago at the time he and his wife had um, three teenage daughters and of course they're carting them around and their friends to all their activities and at one point his wife said why don't you build us a limo so we can fit everybody in wow. he's like okay so this is the second prototype and his family actually drove it like i met his daughter i met his wife um, got to hear stories about when they were actively using it. So it's been well taken care of and I just adore it. I love the idea. I was really impressed when I saw it. And um, so can we take a look at it? Oh, and of then course. You tell That's why it's here. <laughs> and then you tell us the story of how you actually got it. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can do that. Excellent. Um, so... I decided, yep, this is what I want, and I had a, a leftover ticket that I had to cancel because of the lockdown, so oh, yeah. that paid for the trip down there, and obviously I drove it back. So I flew to Louisville and got to the small town where this place is, and again, met the family, took it for a test drive, gave them the check, and it was mine. <gasps> 
And it's been a while since I've owned a vehicle. I've intentionally divested of fossil fuel vehicles to nice. uh, fulfill a promise I made to myself when I lived overseas and wanted to live in an area where public transportation was done well enough that I wouldn't need a car. So yep. that's been about eight years or so. So it's, it's taken a little while to get used to, oh crap, I got to find a parking spot. Oh, I got to buy gas. Oh, insurance. Oh, blah. but I wouldn't have done it any other way. Perfect. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so, do you invite us to take a peek yes, at your baby? Absolutely. You're still choosing the name, right? Yeah, nothing's stuck. I've tried a few, and the thing I'm using right now is Prio, 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 Prius Limo Camper Mobile. And uh, yeah. So, what if we take a look at it? So, Deb, show us. <laughs> Here is she is. And yes, there are six doors. It did come with three rows of seats. When I bought it, I had them take out the middle row. And because of the way they're constructed, um, there's a thing in the center that it's not flat-ish like a lot of vans are when you take everything out. So I've worked around that. And I did leave the front passenger seat in for a while, but I recently took that out. So I've got tons more space. Good choice. All righty. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so I don't open the middle doors because they usually have um, all of my stuff there and I use the real doors um, to get in and out. Typically just and, and this door. And if I understand correctly, they put two together or something Yes, like that? this one had front end damage and this one had back end damage. It's 2007s. And then they totally constructed this part. So again, it's a prototype. They were figuring out how the heck to do this. This is um, fiberglass uh -huh. instead of glass glass. It still works. But that is a window you can put up and down? Yep, it goes up and down. Yeah. Oh wait, no, no, no. No, no this no. doesn't go up and down. But it does work like a regular door. But I never use it because again, I've got stuff set up there. Okay. So. Nice. Yeah, it works. Let's take a it look. works. All right. So here's how I usually get in and out, or the, the hatch. Um, I've left the back two-thirds seat down, and when I'm camping, I have a high-density foam mattress in there. It's four inches, and it's very comfortable. It isn't compacting down yet. And I see you have some legs for the bed. Yes, so again, the the wells that were left on the floor. Uh -huh. Ikea makes Parsons tables that are the very perfect size to fit in there. So you'll see that that's what I have filling up the space that also gives me a little bit of storage if I need it underneath them. Um, and then to prop up, I, I wanted a very no build build. And to prop up the seat, um, so I can extend fully and sleep my five foot six self. Um, I took the legs from those Parson table tops and Velcroed them to uh, corrugated plastic is the sleeping platform that extends beyond the uh, the neck breast. Between the yeah, on that seat, and then the legs prop up the corrugated plastic as the platform gotcha. so i can roll i can push to move and then you you put a mattress here yes on top of that anti-condensation layer which is genius oh thank you so much well thank you for doing that people don't understand you i know put mattresses on plywood no yeah and yeah. i didn't want no plywood Yep. Everything is plastic and polyester in here. I, I love that that uh, piece. What is it? It's uh, it's intended for RVs and boats. Uh -huh. I, I didn't get it on Amazon. It's from a particular company. I don't remember anymore. And I'm actually sleeping like this in my sticks and bricks. I'm practicing doing as much as possible that I would do on the road. So I have a, a full length piece in addition to this. Nice. So I'm not sure if I'll need that full length. It? 
It's anti-condensation something. something, and it comes in a roll. Oh. You can you can decide how much you want to get. And it does have some rigidity to it. It does. Right? So it's if it catches on fabric, it's not good. Like I've snagged things, yeah. and then it's got this layer, so you can cut the Very length clever. as you need it. Very clever. And then you put your mattress on top of that inside a zipper mattress bag, whatever mm -hmm. you call that mattress yeah, the cover, case the, the case, cover. Yeah. yeah. And then here, because in every Prius there's jogs that you have to fill up with something and sometimes you're sleeping like this if you don't do that um, i have a minus 25 degree sleeping bag that's very cushy and i tried sleeping on that with other sleeping pads and it just it just wasn't working so that's when i went to the high density foam and now that lays here and when i don't need it it will be a cushion and when i do need it i'll just pull it out and crawl inside of it yeah on top of the mattress Perfect. and then I stuff my solar panel under there as well mm -hmm. and you were showing me there is some storage yeah storage. every Prius owner loves this this out of here so it's cubby and it's got the tools and uh, to change your spare which is underneath here I've even seen some people just take this all out so that's all storage under here but i haven't gotten that far yet and i'm still learning what i want to put in here because there is a lot of space and you just have to be able to open it up easily so you got to really think about what you're going to put in there but probably winter clothes that kind of thing perfect and uh, so the question is you fit your mattress here mm -hmm. have you measured the length yes uh probably 72 or so. yeah I believe so. Uh, like I said, I'm 5'6", and if I slide down a little bit, then my toes touch the hatch, uh -huh. but not often. But I, I mean, just crawl back up. that is taller, they could go a little forward, right? They could, and also some people, like I have my storage thing right there, that could be moved to the other side. Let's go take a peek at that. Sure. So what are those? These are intended to be like in outdoor showers or kind of whatever people need this kind of thing for as a platform. So I, you get them in a pack of 12. That is so intelligent. And I wanted like a, a rug. Yep. But no. they get wet. Yep. And then what do you do with them? And not only that, I mean, we usually are in very dusty places, lots of dirt going in. Indeed. This one you can you can clean your shoes. Yes, here. yes. So I've got very these clever. three intended for outside this door, and then sometimes I have a pop-up tent, so I'll use the other six or however many I forget um, as a kind of a foyer outside of the tent to keep as much dust and dirt or whatever yep. outside of the tent beautiful yeah. i love it i love it excellent where, do you know where you can get those or what the name uh those is? are on amazon i can get you the link if you like yeah. and what is the name do you know mm, no very <laughs> practical shower mat something like that <laughs> Puzzle. and they they also make um borders so if you don't want it to be so sharp Maybe. on the edge it'll be um yeah with a something you could go over with a wheel you know like oh. a whale chair or something nice. it, it wouldn't go Ugh. Yeah. so very clever yes so we'll show us your yeah uh, bedroom living room yeah so this is where my mattress sits so here's where that console for the middle row of seats uh -huh. came out that maybe this can be taken out but i don't think so so i just live with it and i bought these mats from target um, i think they're intended for like at the kitchen sink and i just put them over and this fills up with my kitchen stuff my toiletries my tools um, everything that i would put into a chest of drawers 
goes in here in Ikea cubbies that have um, Velcro and you can see through to know what's in there, nice. which is helpful. And then there's like this much room between the top of the cubbies and the top of the shelf. And this is just plastic. And it's very light. Very so light. Adding I could lift weight. it up with a finger yeah, you can if add, I wanted to. You're not adding weight. No, not at all. Conversion. No. Excellent. So then I put Velcro on the top of the cubbies and at, on the bottom of these mm -hmm. um, Target plastic trays. They're either this size or this size, so they don't move. We don't. We don't use uh, two inches, three inches, five inches. We <laughs> say these size or these size. Yeah, exactly. Cool. <laughs> We are very cool people. <laughs> but the good thing is, as, as we were saying, if someone is taller than you and yes. you're 5'6", right? Right. So obviously take this out and put it over here or, you know, come up with some other configuration. I'm using this because I had it already. Right. And it just instantly occurred to me, oh, that'd be perfect there. So That's a lot okay. of people in regular Priuses, they'll push the passenger seat all the way up. Ah. So they'll have like seven or eight feet to sleep in if they need to. Wow. Yeah. But here, if you're five, five, six, and you're using this plus the little bit on, that goes on the trunk, you could yep. find a way of extending this one yep. forward. As far as I would want. But yeah, this well, is perfect. It, it, you would call everybody's attention if you're way more, <laughs> way taller than that. Why do you need 10 feet of bed? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But the good thing is what I am seeing from here is that you have a nice living room there. Yes. And this is exactly why I bought it. Because otherwise, here would be the driver's seat, which, you know, you can deal with, but... If you've got this, why not use it? Because the driver's seat is way, way. over there. And you did remove the passenger yep. Yep. seat. So that's where... What was your reasoning for that? Um, because I didn't have enough room for soft-sided bags, for clothes, for camping equipment, um, tarps, that kind of thing. I mean, they could fit in the back here when I'm not sleeping. But again, if you're traveling as a nomad, you don't need a front passenger seat. So I just finally took it out. And you're quite a minimalist. As yes, I am. So, I am. I am. Uh, and it is great that you left these seats, yes. the back seats. And I get it that a lot of people take these out and build a platform. Right. But again, I didn't want all that extra weight. I don't need it. I don't want all that stuff. And besides, if it is raining, you can be sitting there, you yeah. can have your laptop or yep. tablet on the bed or yep. on one of those cabbies. Exactly. And you can spend hours mm -hmm. there. No need to go out. No need. No if need. If there are bears, they will <laughs> get you. <laughs> Stay away. I always Stay say away. if bears learn how to use a can opener, <laughs> we are toast. But uh, these way, I am loving your space Oh, thank here. you. Um, so, so I have um, bungee cords to keep stuff from coming out. Yeah. And then I do have the classic um, car seat organizer there on the back of the driver's side with everyday stuff. So what do you have there? So this is another way to creatively use every available inch of space. I have two of these um, nets. I'm sure they have a more technical name than that. Um, and I've got them as tight as I can get them on the door handles. And this one I put uh, my window coverings in. Uh -huh. And then the other one I tuck my sun hat and any outerwear that I have while I'm camping, just so it's right there um, by the driver's seat. Very good. And you do have a piece of tapestry? I do. The, the I wanted a little bit of color. And again, this is a prototype and there's like a scar all the way across the middle Perfect. of the ceiling. So it just kind of covers that up. Yep. Beautiful. Do you have any idea more or less how much space you have here in terms of um, feet? Well, you told us it's four feet. It's four feet, feet here. Uh -huh. um, is... I've measured the vehicle and it's 18 feet long from Perfect. bumper to bumper. Perfect. So... 
And, I don't know. and besides these vehicles, they are hybrids? Yes. Yes. So Not the plug-in, but the hybrid engine. Do you know how, uh, what your gas mileage oh, yes. is? <laughs> <laughs> Kill us. Of Kill course us I do. <laughs> um, I just drove this to a state park camping a couple weekends ago, and I got 45 miles per gallon. 45, 45. miles per gallon. Yes. Again, reliability and gas mileage. That's what I'm all about. Amazing. It is. It is. Oh, I can see you have a lumbar support. I do. Hello. This helps tremendously because, you know, once you get to be a certain age, <laughs> got to take care of that kind of stuff. And I purposely don't drive more than four or five hours max in a day. I just, I can't do it anymore. So. Very wise. Yeah. And what about your air conditioning? Can you use yes. that at night? That is another reason people get Priuses because you can set the temperature when you you just push the button here once and it, it's in ready mode. And when it senses that it's reached that temperature, it will come on for maybe a minute to put the air conditioning on and then stop. And then maybe, I don't know, four or five times during the night it'll do that and you have uh, temperature control all the time Amazing! it is it feels really great so you don't actually well I, I you have to tell us about your window treatments but it firsthand I think um, you probably can do with all the windows closed Yes. If you have to. Yes. And I've noticed that with trying to use no seam uh, netting, uh -huh. air just doesn't come through. Right. So you might have noticed that old polar fan in the back. Yes. That's all I need, literally, even when it's really hot, because it's just right on me. Yep. And I often have to turn it off because it's too much. Perfect. So, yeah. Yep. The heat doesn't work the way that the air conditioning does. That works like a regular car. Yeah. but I don't plan on being anywhere I right, need it. because so. <laughs> you can chase the good weather. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And uh, this reminds me to make sure to get the uh, motion sensor lights under my car that keep rodents away and the bag with the um, Irish Spring soap underneath my car because I've forgotten it at a campsite once. So <laughs> that's what that's for. <laughs> Don't forget. That's good. So before uh, leaving, you yeah. have to get all the things out. This is my phone thing, so I have to see it. So what are these? So anybody who has a window like a Prius in the back realizes it. Yeah, you can make Reflectix window coverings, but because of gravity, they'll fall. So there's all kinds of shims that I've tried and I still don't remember how this occurred to me, but I came up with suction cups that hold these pair of windshield reflectors onto the window. And I've had it on there for a week and a half at a time and it hasn't fallen. So, nice. so far, so good. So how do you put them up? So, just wanna make sure these are wet. <laughs> Otherwise it will fall. And I purposely put the silver side out to keep the heat out. Wait, this way. I should label this so I don't have to do this every time. Well, the white label. Yeah. Wow. Oh, there you go. Duh. <laughs> so, <laughs> snap these in place. And that's it. And you actually made this one. I did. You, you so I binder clipped them together. First I marked out, you can still see the, the yeah. white pencil lines. Um, and uh, taped each layer with, uh, I think, clear Gorilla Tape. And yeah. then sliced it a little bit wider than these suction cups so they could slide through. And then that's it. I <laughs> love low tech troubleshooting. Absolutely. And you sealed them with black tape. Yes. Actually, this layer, maybe that isn't clear. I thought it was. Maybe I ran out, I don't remember. But there were, you know, some spots where light could come through, so I came back and put this. And I'm hoping once I get out into the high temps, 
on the desert, it doesn't fall apart, but then I'll just figure out something else. You would have to use some crazy glue and stick it to you. <laughs> or maybe it'll just bake in place, right? There you go. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if I could do this on every window, I think I would prefer to do that. So I've seen some YouTubers talk about negative space in your, in your space because you can't have clutter around you all the time. And as nomads, that's an issue. So a few months ago, I tried rigging up this netting to allow me to put more stuff in this space that doesn't do anything. Show us the, the one behind yeah. you. Yeah, this one. This one didn't stay at all. I'm not sure why, but, but is this is the empty space. Yes. Yeah. So, so you, you could put, I don't know, something in there. <laughs> right. Because you're sort of putting a net yep. to hold things in place. Right. And, and put something in here that's very lightweight, obviously, because this is um, clips from Ikea on strips of Velcro that Huh. are hanging on to the fabric here mm -hmm. so like i don't know what i was thinking maybe like a box of kleenex or yeah you know something like that small things you may not need every day like your bandanas <laughs> your neck things when it's really hot and there you go but now i'm kind of glad that, that didn't work because i'm very aware of the negative space and right not and having stuff. And I'm thinking of magnets. Have you thought of magnets? Um, this is plastic. Oh, that is yeah. plastic. Otherwise, that'd be great. Like, yeah, this is a yeah. huge tin can. So yeah, when I can do magnets, like with uh, the emergency blankets that double as reflective tarps yep. to keep the sun out, I've got those magnetic hooks and just put those in the grommets. Um, trying to think of what else I do with magnets. There's an ice cream man. There's <laughs> an ice cream truck coming. <laughs> okay, we have to show that. <laughs> what is your bathroom arrangement? Well, it's like everybody else. I have a pee bottle and I've actually been practicing that in my sticks and bricks for the last two years because in 2019 in August, that's when I decided this is what I'm going to do. So again, as much as possible start practicing now for later you'll really appreciate doing that because it makes a huge difference and then um, I started out with uh, not a bucket but a, I think it was intended for farm animals to put oats and stuff in it that would um, hook onto the side of a fence but realized that I needed a bucket with a lid with a gamma lid is what I have now and then I use what's called double duty bags yep. and I'm sure eventually I'll just use regular plastic bags but that's what I use right now yep. very good and uh, your car is quite empty yes right now, yes but, but you do own everything you need I do I do and you're ready to go on your first I am Trip? nine days from today, I will be starting a leave of absence where I'm going to drive south and then turn right and hang out in Nevada and Arizona, wherever things take me and uh, do a longish trip instead of like four day weekends, just to make sure that this is what I want to do. I'm sure it is, but. And eventually you may switch to actually living yes that's the plan again in the nearish future amazing yeah amazing you have the most unique vehicle <laughs> yes there. i do i love how it just makes people smile it makes people's day like they'll literally follow me into a parking spot, into a parking lot and get out. Oh my God, that is so cool. You have to tell me. So it, it kind of defeats the stealth factor, but um, I don't mind. Right, because it is not very stealth. No. But it still is not a camper. 
It's not no, like it's not an RV. No, something. no. It's very manageable. Very manageable. Very creative. Very amazing. Debs, thank you for inviting us to your home. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> we will see you around on the road. See you on the and, road. And you're going to be probably going to the RTR, maybe? Um, we'll see. We'll see. If not this year, definitely next year. There you go. Yep. Deb, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yay. <laughs>